Glory to God. There's such a strong anointing on um, sowing thousand dollar seeds. It's miraculous what will happen as you grow in the honor anointing. The more that you move in the honor anointing, you'll step into realms where you'll dream about bringing God pleasure in your giving. I know I went through a phase in my life where as a young boy, my mother would teach me about sowing. And while I was sowing so uh, strong, I got to the degree that my mother would give me an allowance, which uh, for those of you are that don't know, like an allowance is like when um, sometimes when you're a child, your parents might give you money for doing chores. But let me tell you the wild thing. I didn't get money from doing chores. My mother gave me an allowance and the Lord blessed me um, to be raised in like what, what you would call like a high class financial family. Um, though my mother was single, um, she uh, worked and while I went to school, she had favor with the the job where they would let her schedule be flexible. So she'll pick me up from school and um, I'll, I'll have a caretaker with me and um, she'll go back to work and she'll just do it like that. And sometimes she'll work overtime, but rarely on Saturday. Uh, she And she will always have a lot of money. And so she would give me an allowance from that money. And my mother started teaching me about sewing. And so like as a little boy, I got on fire about it. And so my mother would give me an amount of money a week. And when I got that amount of money for a week, I was so on fire about what my mother taught me that I sold. And my mother always taught, she taught me about sewing, but she told me always tithe off of what I give you. So my mother was expecting me to tithe, but because she had taught me about sewing, I disrespected the tithe. Praise God. And so sometimes my mother would come back during that week and say, you got that money on me? Let, uh, let me use some of it to, to go inside a gas station. Now, you know, like sometimes you might leave like the rest of your money at the house or you might have a little bit of money on the card and you might not want to use that money. So, so she'd be like, you got that money on you? Let, let me have it. And I, I ain't know what to say. I was like... Uh, And my mother said, you ain't got the money. I said, I said, um, so finally I have to confess. I like, well, mother, I sold it. I sold all of it to the pastor. I sold it all. She was like, no, that's okay. That's okay. But I, I could see my mother mind. She like, this boy right here, I told him to tithe. You done gave the whole thing. But she wasn't mad or nothing. But I shocked my mother, you know, because my mother was like, you know, I just told you a tithe, but you done gave the whole thing. So what you believe in God for? <laughs> so bountiful sowing uh, was an anointing that I, I, I leaked into, I, I frogged into because I disrespected a tithe and I, I decided I want bountiful sowing because as a little boy, I knew my I knew my destiny on this earth was big and, and some of you all have felt this and, and I, I I want you to um, touch ties with me on this I knew that my destiny was big in this life when I went when, when I was a little child at two years old I was laying hands on on, on the, the the dolls that my mother um, not the dolls the, <laughs> no 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 homo the 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 caption no no um I was laying hands on the wrestling figures that my mother gave me, WWF. So I would have Shawn Michaels. I'm laying Shawn Michaels out. And my mother used to watch me doing that. And 
when she saw me laying my hands on the dolls, blessed be his holy mighty name, not the dolls, the action figures. <laughs> when she saw me laying my hands on the action figures, and I was blowing on the action figures, my mother used to come tell me, she said, what you doing? She said, you praying for them? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I was two years old doing that, too. Blowing on my, 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 um, my, my, um, my action figures that didn't sound too right. But anyhow, moving along, <laughs> I, I'm telling you my story, so, so, so keep your heart focused. So, um, while I was doing that, that was my divine destiny. So God, since I came to the earth, had me moving in my, my divine assignment. So let me say this. Once my mother introduced to me this law, I knew that this was my gateway. To all that was locked up in my spirit. This was my gateway. I knew offhand. I wasn't in question. When she revealed the law to me, my spirit came alive. And I said, I'm going to work this law for the rest of my life. And then I realized that God had told Noah, as long as the earth remain, there'll be seed time and harvest. So I realized this is not just something my mother is telling me this is something that god has said so so it became a lifestyle before i even knew the text and then my mother started teaching me on the text i was like wow i know that this is my destiny see when you chosen god gonna get the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down the strongholds into your hands he going to get it into your hands, whether through your parent, whether through a preacher, whether through your prophet. He going to get it into your hands, whether through somebody that's just temporary in your life. Remember, I gave you the powerful revelation that there are people that are sent to you. There are people that are assigned to you, people that are sent to you when they are no longer sent to you. What they say will corrupt you. It'll destroy you because God not using them to speak a word to you. When people are sent to you, they are just there to get you in the right path. When people are assigned to you, you, they are there forever. That's your eternal God connection. And the Lord is moving through them to train you in this life for heaven, for all eternity. So I started sewing and my mother would give me the next week's money. And then my mother it happened when she asked me, you, you got a couple, you got those dollars that I gave to you. And I had done sold everything. Now, saints, during the time of me sewing, I would have people come to my mother and said, I want to buy your son a basketball uh, court, a whole basketball court. So, saints, I had my own basketball. That was my dream because at the time, Allen Iverson was playing, um, which was my favorite player. I had long braids. And I was fast and I could shoot. Saints in my neighborhood, I used to wow my neighborhood because everybody that played me, whether they was 23, 24, it don't matter how old they was in years, I would beat them. And I wasn't beating them off of power. I was beating them off of strategy because I would see if you bigger than me, I'm going to shoot from a distance. I'm going to wear you out. So, so let me just tell you something. Strategy uh, is better than power because Goliath had power. David had strategy. His strategy was able to shut down Goliath's power. Because really strategy is carrying power that's invisible. St 
strategy is carrying power that you can't see with your naked eye. Strategy is carrying the power that you can't really see if you're looking in the natural. So it's hidden power, it's secretive power, it's secretive authority, it's secretive victory. But it becomes visible for all eyes to see once you move in that strategy. Praise God. Daniel had strategy. The people had power because they was moving through that law. They said, you can't inquire of God a man for 30 days. His strategy made him look like he was powerless, but he ended up where the lion, the lion's mouth was shut and he got exalted to a high position. There go the strategy carrying hidden power, hidden victory, hidden promotion. So I started sowing everything that my mother would give me. And I desired my own basketball court. Somebody bought it for me. So I didn't have to go and play on the park with nobody. I had my own basketball court, my own domain, where people would have to come to me to play. I ain't had to go play with it. But I got that off of sewing. That was a hidden agenda in my heart. But the Lord watched my sewing account and it moved him. I then started watching TBN with my mother every now and again. I would see Paul and Jan Crouch. And I loved them so dearly. Sometimes I miss them. But I saw both of them enter into heaven as the Lord is my witness. The Lord gave me the privilege to watch both Jan and Paul enter into heaven. And I saw their greeting. And it wasn't no stranger greeting. It was, hey, baby. So I know in heaven you're going to know who your covenant partner is. Now, I will watch the telethon and I will see the preacher say give a thousand, right? And the giver and me will always watch and say, man, I want to sow this thousand dollar seed. So one day I got an idea. I said, Lord, Jesus, I really want to sow $1,000. Could you put $1,000 in my hands? I won't spend it. I won't buy nothing. I just want to sow it into your gospel. I said, would you give me $1,000 for me to sow into your gospel? And I heard the, the voice of the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to put 1000 in your hands. I'm going to put more than 1000 in your hands. And the day came with the Lord as I was sowing and working my way up. And you got to appreciate your seeds. You got to appreciate your sowing. Uh, never condemn yourself because it'll stop the power. You know when you work in your faith. You know when your faith is at work. You know when your heart is being purged through your sowing. You know it because you'll feel it. You'll feel that you're going to leaps and bounds. And shut the devil up. Don't let him try to irritate you and make you feel insecure you know that you're growing as long as you're growing there's no condemnation in growth write that down there's no condemnation in growth there's no condemnation in growth if you know you eat five pieces of chicken a day and now you eating two pieces of chicken <laughs> there's no condemnation Popeye's got me suspicious about that chicken now there's no condemnation in growth. Isn't that powerful? So as I was growing and sowing and I was so more money, I would feel so powerful because I started seeing miracles happening. I sold so much at one time that somebody came and told my mother, I, I got to buy your son some clothes. I want to buy him whatever he wants. And to, know, to let you know that I'm safe and I ain't going to do him no harm, you can come alongside of him while I'm shopping for him. Took me shopping. And saints, I was taking the money that my mother gave me. And my mother gave me the privilege I could go shopping with that money. I took, the pri I took that privilege and I started sowing that money. 
And in the midst of me sowing, God overtook somebody and had them come and bought me whatever I wanted. Took me shopping for clothes. But my mother had gave me that money. I had the option to go invest in clothes, but I was so consumed with honor. When you consume with honor, you leave this natural realm and you want to sow into your man of God. Your man of God becomes your baby. Your man of God becomes your infant. Your man of God becomes your child. In the same way you want to keep that child, that pampers clean and all that tough stuff, you want to take care of that man of God and make sure that that man of God is enjoying himself and having the best type of life. I was consumed with that. So I started sowing. I would see my seed levels go to leaps and bounds. And the money, I started seeing my mother make more money and my mother give me more money and I had more money to sow. But this thousand dollar seed was my jackpot seed and I, I knew I need this seed in my hands. I need this seed in my hands. Whatever God got to do to get this seed in my hands, I need it in my hands. It's like, it's like when something comes out and it's brand new and it's like, I just need to possess this. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to possess it, but I need to. I know I needed to possess this thousand dollar seed. And so time went by after I prayed and thousands of dollars came into my life. Thousands. And the first thing I did when I got the thousands, I rejoiced because I realized, oh my God, here go the thousand dollar seed. Malakashta, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The thousand dollar seed came into my, and, and, and I said the thousand dollar seed. And I started immediately taking that thousand out that money and I sold it. But when I sold that thousand, I felt my spirit under open heaven a tangible presence of God and the wind of the Holy Spirit overwhelmed me as soon as I released the seed. I felt like I was Superman. I felt like I had stepped into a chamber and now my whole life has changed. The Lord sent me instant approval in seconds that the thousand dollar seed had just touched his heart. And it pleased God. And I loved on the Lord. And moments after me sowing that thousand, quickly I saw the other thousands that I had and I realized this about to be a sowing machine session. When I sold that thousand dollars, out of that thousand dollars, over $7,000 came to me out of that thousand. And I said, wow, now here go another sewing session. The thousand dollar seed touched Jesus' heart so much that he moved avenues and sources to push money in my direction. Strangers that I had no idea, never met, never spoke with, never ate dinner with, started pushing money into my hands.
I started having checks show up from companies and businesses. And the companies and businesses started handing me money. My own insurance company for my vehicle wrote me out a check for a large lump sum of money and I never got into an accident. It did. And watch this. They didn't even know what happened. They told me, we giving you this because we believe that you paid too much money. But but how, if I paid too much money, how did you give me this large lump sum of money? I didn't pay no thousands plus dollars. So how, how did you? I didn't pay no thousand plus dollars for no contract. So how are you giving me these thousand plus dollars? But that's what the Lord paid in their mind. Supernatural money showed up in my account. One day, I was on my way to a, a, a divine assignment that God had spoke to me about in the evening. And I looked in my account and there was a large lump sum of money in my account. And I called the bank. I said, um... I see this large lump sum of money in my account, but I'm not tracking the sender. Is there any way that we could um, investigate and find the sender? They said, uh, not investigate. I said, is there any way that you see the sender on your end? Their response was to me. They said, Mr. Holmes, we see that uh, the large lump sum is in there, but how, uh, how did it get there? Do you know anybody that was scheduled to give you money today? I said, um, no. I said, well, is there a name showing up? They said, there's no name. There's no sender. Um, they said, well, what we can do, Mr. Holmes, we'll do an investigation. If you like. I said, no, 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 Nick. 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 There were just three nigs that came off of me. There's just three. I had to deny them three times. It was just three. Peter Spirit, Wu-Tang Clan, ain't nothing to mess with came up off of me, and it was just three niggas. I can't finish the whole story, but niggas just. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I know where it came from. I said, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Not gonna grab me, Sister Sledge. Not after I done sold my seed. You ain't gonna grab me, put me in no investigation. Y'all ain't gonna understand this. I'm working with a supernatural economy. I'm working with a su I know where the deposit came from. And saints, I was shocked as I was driving to the divine assignment that I had that night. In the back of my mind, I'm like, what have I done? What have I done? I done stepped into a supernatural lifestyle. Now stuff is happening to me that don't make no sense. But it makes sense. There are seeds that don't make sense, but it makes sense. It don't make sense, but it do make sense. But it was the thousand dollar seed that I sowed. So I started sowing more thousands. And the miracles started exploding. And the finances started increasing. And the favor started intensifying. And people started showing me love. Overwhelmingly. There was people that would say, I have to do this, so please don't stop me. Do you know that self-righteousness is an enemy to the reaping anointing? I just heard the Spirit of God say that. That's very powerful. Self-righteousness is an enemy to the reaping anointing. So... When you're moving in self-righteousness, you'll stop the reaping anointing on your life. So there will be people tell me, 
I got to do this for you. Please don't stop me. And as a result, I begin to increase and increase and increase and increase and increase. My biological mother, in the midst of me increasing, I'm still sheltering her. I'm still making sure she good. God always going to have somebody in your life to let you know whether or not you have remembered him. The Bible said, remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth. See, when you have a man of God, your man of God is going to let you know. That's your soul. They're going to let you know whether or not you remember the Lord. When you increase it. And some people don't. So if, if I increase financially and I don't, I don't remember who, who the Lord has paid in my life, what I'm showing the Lord, forget you. And then that money ain't going to last. The money that you hide from God will hide all the money that God had for you in the future. Wow. And the money that you had in the future is to deliver you from this Pharaoh system and the famine and the things that's coming upon flesh and blood. The wrath of God. Money is a defense. That's the word of God. The thousand dollar seed changed my life. Now I sow thousands all the time. One of the reasons why I reach millions of people. We can have two weeks where we reach over 15 million people. On just social media. Is because of the thousand dollar seed. I've gone into networks. And preached the gospel on networks. On TV. Because of my thousand dollar seed. When I honor a man of God. I don't believe in sowing less than a thousand dollar seed. The thousand dollar seed touches God. Solomon sold it. And when he sold it, the Lord asked him, what shall I give you? Look at the life of Solomon. He had so much pleasure, so much prosperity, so much joy, so much health. You never see Solomon sick. So much wealth. Money was coming to him at an overwhelming rate. He couldn't even track all the money because of the thousand dollar seed. Because I was chosen. The Lord directed me to hear about sowing because sowing is the weapon of the chosen. When you're chosen, you're going to need the seed because you're going to get fought. Many things are going to come to kill your influence in this life and kill your assignment in this life. And if you're not a sower, it will take you out. If you're not in honor towards God, the devil will win you in this life. You need the seed. Because you don't know how many people pray witchcraft against what you're believing God for. Some people love to see you depressed, sick, high blood pressure, not having good diagnosis from the doctor. Some people like seeing you got an old car. You're not living for that. But what I'm telling you is that you need to work God's laws so that God can back you. Because when you depend on people, they may be the very one that love to see you at poverty level, at the level of struggling financially. Some people like to hear when you don't have enough money to feed your child. Some people love to hear when you're about to get pit out of your place. Some people love to hear that your car just broke down. You don't know what to do. So you need Jesus, our precious King Jesus. 
our beautiful Lord and Savior. You need him. And I realize that he sent me to the earth to move just like him. So I started sowing and my goal was that thousand dollar seed. And when I got to that goal, all heaven broke loose in my life. You caught that? We hear about all hell breaking loose, but all heaven broke loose in my life. From that time until now, I've been underneath an open heaven. I have no more desires. God has satisfied all of them. I'm helping people reach their desires. I'm helping people reach their dreams because God has met my dreams. Now, let me just say this. I don't have dreams. I'm a visionary. The Bible says old man would dream dream, young man would dream visions. I'm a visionary. Visionary is assignment mixed with promise. Wow, 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 wow. Visionary is assignment mixed with promise. So, as you sow, and you sow bountiful, the higher the Lord will allow you to be, in receiving greater measures of his promise, his instructions, and his, uh, his flow to the people that you meet. You'll, you'll bring the God flow to them. The thousand dollar seed has anointed me to heal the sick, to preach this gospel with signs following. The word of God said that when Solomon was sowing that the fire and the glory fell. Fire. And glory fell. The fire and the glory is falling because they're sowing. I have the fire and the glory on JHM forever because I sow forever. Is the thousand dollar seed that did it. The more you love God, the more that your soul. The word of the Lord said that Solomon loved the Lord and he offered the thousand bread. It was out of the love that he had for the Lord. Money is a weapon that I use to love on Jesus in the most passionate way. And the thousand dollar seed is the reason why I have wisdom that's greater than Solomon. I've done things that Solomon will never do. Because remember, there's a one greater than Solomon here. 